In this video, we are going to look at uh, this uh, Captain Wise's packing problem. This problem is an example of the application of linear programming. And in this example, we are going to look at what to buy and how to transport what you want to buy. So you can think of this example as the interface between supply management and logistics management. Once a year, a ship visits an isolated island in the South Pacific to purchase goods for resale. The island produces rice, sugar, iron ore, and trinkets. The captain of the ship, Captain Wise, has long-term contracts specifying the prices at which islanders will sell these commodities. Captain Wise must decide how much of each commodity to buy and how to load the ship in light of certain restrictions. Specifically, certain weight and volume limits must be observed. The ship has three cargo holds. The ship must be loaded trim. The ratio of the weight of the cargo in each hold to that hold's maximum weight limit must be equal across all three holds. Captain Wise wishes to maximize total profit. To help Captain Wise, let's formulate a linear programming model to this problem and solve it with Solver in Excel. Now let's look at the information of this problem. Captain Wise's ship has three cargo holds, forward, center, and after. The capacities in weight in terms of times are 75, 150, and 50 times respectively. Capacities in volumes are 4,000, 10,000, and 7,000 cubic feet in each of the three cargo holds. Captain Wise can choose to buy any combination of those four commodities, rice, sugar, iron ore, and trinkets. At this island, there are 200 tons of rice available, 100 tons of sugar available, 500 tons of iron ore available, and 50 tons of trinkets available. In this column, we have the information about the balconies of each of the four commodities. For example, you will look at the rice, one ton of rice has a volume of 60 cubic feet, and one ton of sugar has a volume of 48.6 cubic feet, and so on and so forth. The unit profitability of each of the four commodities are $800 per time for rice, $200 per time for iron ore, and $2,500 per ton for trinkets. Now, let's think about it. How we are going to formulate this linear program model for Captain Wise? The key over here is to determine the decision variables for Captain Wise. Captain Wise has to make a decision about how many times of each commodity to purchase. But that's not it. Captain Wise also needs to decide how he is going to load each of the commodities across the three cargo holds he has. Here's how I would like to define the decision variables. Keep in mind, there's no unique way of formulating a linear programming model. At the end of these uh, uh, PowerPoint slides, I'm going to show you another way of formulating linear programming model for this problem. In the first step, I'm going to determine the decision variables. I would like to use 12 decision variables. First of four are FR, FS, FO, and FT. F means forward cargo hold. R stands for rice, S stands for sugar, O stands for iron ore, and T stands for trinkets. So FR means the tons of rice we are going to store in forward cargo hold. FS means tons of sugar 
we are going to load in forward cargo hold, and so on and so forth. Similarly, we are going to define CR, CS, CO, and CT. CR is the times of rise we are going to buy and load in center cargo hold. CT, for example, is the times of trinkets we are going to buy and load in center cargo hold. In the end, AR, AS, AO, and AT. AS, for example, is the times of sugar we are going to buy and load in after cargo hold. And AO is the times of iron ore we are going to buy and load in the after hold. After we define those 12 decision variables, it becomes easy to formulate the objective function of this linear programming problem. Capital Wise would like to maximize the total profit. We know that for each ton of rice he purchases, he's going to make a profit of $800. But how many tons of rice to buy? It is nothing but the sum of FR, CR, and AR. No matter how many times of rice Captain Wise purchases, it has to be loaded in one of the three cargo holds. So the rice we have in forward hold FR, the amount of rice we have in center cargo hold CR, and the rice we have in after cargo hold combined should be the total amount of rice Captain Wise will buy. Similarly, the sum of FS, CS, and AS is the total times of sugar Captain Wise is going to purchase. And FO, CO, and AO add up to the total times of iron ore Captain Wise is going to buy. In the end, the sum of FT, CT, and AT is the total times of trinkets Captain Wise is going to purchase. Next, let's formulate constraints. That's going to be our step three. There are quite a few groups of constraints involved in this uh, problem. First of all, let's look at the uh, weight capacity constraints. Keep in mind, total weight of all cargo in forward hold must be no more than 75 times. So, how many times of commodity we are going to store in forward hold? That is going to be the sum of FR, FS, FO, and FD. What they have in common is F, meaning forward cargo hold. So FR is the total times of rice we have in forward cargo hold. FS is the total times of sugar we have in the forward cargo hold, and so on and so forth. So the sum of those four numbers is the times of cargo we are going to have in the forward cargo hold. And it must be no more than 75 times. And similarly, the total times of commodity in center cargo hold must be no more than 150 times. That is to say, the sum of CR, CS, CO, and CT must be less than or equal to 150. And in the end, the sum of AR, AS, AO, and AT must be no more than 50 times. And those three are the weight capacity constraints. Next, let's look at volume capacity constraints. Let's consider the forward cargo hold first. In forward cargo hold, of course, we can store rice, sugar, iron ore, and trinkets. But keep in mind, one ton of rice has a volume of 60 cubic feet. So 60 times FR is how many cubic feet of rice we have in the forward cargo hold. Similarly, 48.6 times FS is how many cubic feet of sugar we have in the forward cargo hold, and so on and so forth. So the sum of the uh, four volumes coming from rice, sugar, iron ore, and trinkets 
must be no more than 4,000 cubic feet. That is the volume capacity of forward cargo hold. And similarly, we can formulate the volume capacity constraints for center cargo hold and aft cargo hold. And next, let's consider availability constraints. Keep in mind, this island can sell capital wise up to 200 tons of rice, 100 tons of sugar, 500 tons of iron ores, and up to 50 tons of trinkets. So how many tons of rice we're going to buy? It's nothing but the sum of FR, CR, and AR. The sum of those three must be no more than 200, which is the availability constraint of rice. And then we can formulate the availability constraints for sugar, iron ore, and trinkets. For example, the availability constraint of trinkets would be FT plus CT plus AT less than or equal to 50. Now, let's consider the trickiest constraint of this problem which is the trim constraint. Trim constraint says that the cargo should be loaded equally across three cargo holds. We know that the total tons of cargo in forward cargo hold will be the sum of FR, FS, FO, and FT, and the weight capacity of forward cargo hold is 75 tons. So the ratio would be the sum of FR, FS, FO, and FT over 75. Similarly, the weight ratio of center cargo hold would be the total weight of all four commodities over the weight capacity of center cargo hold. That is, sum of CR, CS, CO, and CT over 150. In the end, the weight ratio in after cargo hold is the sum of AR, AS, AO, and AT over the weight capacity of 50 times for after cargo hold. So those three ratios must be equal. But the thing is, uh, this trim constraint is very hard to use in Excel. So we're going to reformulate the trim constraint in the following format. First of all, let's consider the weight ratio of forward cargo hold must be equal to the weight ratio of center cargo hold. So we are going to convert that into this kind of linear format, which is 2 times the sum of FR, FS, FO, and FT minus the sum of CR, CS, CO, and CT must be equal to 0. In the end, there's an underlying constraint that all the decision variables must be non-negative. This means that, for example, FR must be greater than or equal to zero. We cannot load, say, negative five times of rise in the forward cargo hold. It makes no sense. In the next slides, I'm going to put uh, everything together, and let's take a look at the Intel linear programming model for capital wise packing problem. And this is how the entire linear programming model for this problem looks like. And we have 12 decision variables, FR all the way to AT, and then our objective function is to maximize the total profit generated by those four commodities. And we have a long list of 12, 13 constraints. Like I mentioned earlier, there's no unique way of formulating a linear program model. In the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you an alternative way of formulating a linear program model for this problem. Let's take a look. In this case, I'm going to define four additional decision variables. They are R, S, O, and T. R is the times of rise we're going to buy and store in our ship. S is the total tons of sugar we're going to buy, and so on and so forth. 
the other twelve decision variables remain the same. F R F S all the way to A O A T. Now let's take a look at our objective function. And our profits come from rice, sugar, iron ore, and trinkets. So the total profit function, which is also our objective function, is eight hundred dollars per time times total times of rice, which is R, and then plus six hundred times S plus two hundred times O plus twenty five hundred times T. Next, let's look at the uh, constraints. Those constraints in red are the ones different from the previous model. If you take a look, we still have the uh, weight capacity constraints, the volume capacity constraints, and so on and so forth. But as far as the availability constraints are concerned, we have something different. We have R less than or equal to 200 instead of FR plus CR plus AR less than or equal to 200, and so on and so forth. However, in order for this alternative model to work, we have to add four additional constraints. Those are the definitions of R, S, O, and T. For example, R is nothing but the sum of FR, CR, and AR. You are not going to buy more rice than you can possibly store on your ship. In the next video, I'm going to use my original model and solve that model in Excel. And we're going to use Solver to help us find the optimal solution to Captain Wise's optimization problem.